All right, in this example, we're told that we have an ice cube with some initial volume, and it's floating in a cup of water. Actually, the picture, I have it floating in a cup of soda, but it's close enough. And we're told that the volume of the water in the cup is given. And we're also given the specific gravity of the ice. It's a little bit different than the specific gravity of water. And we want to show mathematically that if the ice cube melts, that the water level in the cup remains unchanged. So if I could measure the height of the free surface of that cup of water, that as the ice cubes melt, that height isn't going to change. We're trying to show that. So where we'll start with this is just a conservation of mass type of statement. We're going to say that the change in mass of the water, and when I write water here, I mean the liquid water, will be equal to the minus change in mass of the ice. That's just a statement of conservation of mass, that if we have some mass of ice that melts, so delta m ice is negative, throw another negative in front of it, that'll be a positive, and that'll correspond to the mass of water that we get. So as the mass of ice melts, we get the same mass of water, just conservation of mass. Well, we'll write that in terms of volumes because, you know, our height here really is related to volume, so we're going to write it in terms of volumes, so we'll have the density of water times the change in the volume of the water equal to minus the density of the ice times the change in the volume of the ice. And we'll just write that right-hand side in terms of specific gravity of the ice since we're given specific gravity. Okay, so I just wrote it in terms of specific gravity of ice and you can see we can divide through by the densities of water. So we have delta V of the water, so the change in volume of the liquid water is minus the specific gravity of the ice times change in volume of the ice. Okay, so that underlying term comes from a conservation of mass statement. Now let me do a force balance. So let's say we have some ice cube here floating in the water. Uh, we have the weight of the ice cube pushing down and that's going to be supported by a buoyant force acting upwards. So we'll equate the weight of the ice to the buoyant force acting on the ice. The weight of the ice will be the density of the ice times gravity times the volume of the ice cube. And the buoyant force will be equal to the weight of the water that's been displaced. So that'll be the density of the water times gravity times the volume of water displaced. Okay. And again, we can write the density of ice as the specific gravity of ice times the density of water so that we can divide through by the density of water and gravity from both sides. And we'll have, let me just write it this way, uh, volume of water displaced is equal to the specific gravity of the ice times the volume of the ice. So this comes from a force balance. And I'm going to just go one step further. I'm going to go ahead and just take the uh, take a delta of both sides. So instead of volume of water displaced, the change in the water displaced. So I'm just going to do a belt delta to both sides. So delta V water displaced. There is no delta that we have to worry about for the specific gravity of ice. It's just a constant. So that'll still just be specific gravity of ice. And then I'll have a delta V for the ice. Okay, so what I've done here, just to go from this step to this step, is I've just it's kind of like taking a derivative. I just took a delta of both sides. All right, well, if you look at the expression I have from conservation of mass, and this expression that comes from a force balance, you'll see that the right-hand sides are actually the same, except there's just a negative difference. So let me write, let me equate those two items together. Okay, so we'll have delta V of water equals a minus delta V of water displaced. Okay, so what I've done is I've just set these two expressions equal to one another and uh, just rewrote them. Okay, so I, I, just, the minus sign is right there. So let's just take a look at this for a moment. So on the left-hand side, this is the change in the volume of water added to the cup. This is coming from the melting of the ice. So we get some increase in the water because it's melted. And then this side is the amount of water displaced because we have the ice floating in it. 
So this is the volume that's been displaced, and you'll see that that if we um, this is the change in the volume um, of that water that's been displaced because of the melting ice. So if we if we lose some volume here because the ice is melted, so this will be negative. That'll make it a positive, and that'll be the change. You know, we'll get an equal amount of water we've added to the cup. So we have some water that we no longer need to displace, and that's equal to the new amount of water that we're getting. So what's happening here is that the, the, the volume of water uh, effectively in the cup remains exactly the same. Okay, that their, their increase in the water volume is exactly balanced by a decrease in the displaced water volume, which means that the water level height won't change. Okay, so the height actually remains the same. And this actually has important implications uh, in terms of climate change. So if we have uh, ice that's floating in uh, icebergs floating in the ocean, as those icebergs melt, actually the, the level of the ocean won't change as a result of the melting icebergs. As we you know, showed here in this particular example, uh, what will happen is you'll just displace less water in the ocean as the ice melts. And then that iceberg that's melted, that, that volume just replaces the volume that's been displaced. And so the level of the ocean would remain the same. However, any ice that melts on the, on the land that's not originally floating in the water, and when that melts, that definitely adds to the uh, change in elevation of the ocean. So any ice that's been sitting on land, like in Greenland or in Antarctica or wherever, when that ice melts, that definitely raises the height of the ocean. But any icebergs that are already floating, when they melt, that won't make any difference to the sea level change. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, the end of this example. So it was really just a combination of conservation of mass and a force balance, and then just kind of thinking through the, the implications of the final statement here. Okay, we'll go ahead and end it there.